Hello and welcome back to another KSP video. We have an American space shuttle. We have a Soviet space shuttle and the two of them are going to be going head to head in a race to see who can build a space station the quickest. Ready? Three, two, one, go, 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 go. And these two shuttles are now off the pad and they're going to be getting up to deploy their first payload into orbit. Both of these shuttles are going to be building the exact same station. They're going to be on a race to see who can complete their station and land back at the runway the quickest. Uh, these stations are going to require three launches each, so each shuttle will have three opportunities to go up, deploy a payload, dock with their uh, their station, and then land back at the runway. All three of those things will need to be completed before they can start the next flight, but the two shuttles have already deployed their side boosters or staged them away, and now they are just burning their center core for the uh, Soviet, and the Americans are burning their RS-25 engines. Uh, the Soviet space shuttle, if you do not know, is called the Buran. It was developed by the, I bet you could guess it, the Soviet Union, and it was it definitely didn't use stolen designs from the space shuttle to help it be better. Uh, it is definitely bigger than the American space shuttle. The uh, energy is the booster that it uses, uh, the rocket that it is mounted on. Uh, that thing could, does technically have a higher payload capacity than the Saturn V, so this thing is massive, with, and it has four huge engines on the bottom which provide a ton of thrust. The Space Shuttle does have three RS-25s mounted to the back of it. That is a massive, massive, massive benefit of the Space Shuttle, the American one. It has reusable engines, the Soviet does not. But that is not important. We are already in orbit, both of them. And it looks like the Americans are ahead for the moment. They are deploying their very first payload, which is the crew section. There are three payloads, as I said. The first one is the, the crew module. The second is the fuel module. And the third is the electrical module. So it looks like the Americans have taken an early lead. And now the Soviet are ready to deploy their payload, just attaching that booster. And it's going to get out of the way very shortly. And then it will deploy its uh, payload, which, uh, which, like I said, rather, was uh, exactly the same as the NASA shuttle's payload. And there it goes, just opening up its cargo bay in preparations to deploy that payload. I'm going to transfer one crew out into the uh, cupola module, which will act as the control point of the craft. And we do have ample electric charge and reaction wheels, so we can more easily do a very loud, lazy method of docking. So there goes its payload, and now we are going to cut back to the split screen where we can see the American shuttle is just already coming in for its re-entry quite a ways ahead of the Soviet. Let's see if it can bring in the gap. Uh, looks like we have overshot the runway just a little bit, but the American does have a little bit of fuel left in those RS-25 engines that it can fire to get its way back to the runway. Now the Soviet Buran shuttle is what it's known as, has a one very, very big advantage over the American one, or the NASA one, and that is that it has jet engines mounted to the back of it. So the Soviet Buran is capable of a powered flight, for sustained powered flight rather. I used up all my fuel on the NASA space shuttle pretty much instantly um, during my burn. I had like five seconds of burn, but even so, we are coming in. The first person back so far is the NASA one doing a very chunky landing. Uh, that's not generally advised, but you know, I was kind of low on speed, so <laughs> that kind of happens sometimes. You know, that's what happens when you overshoot. And now we're going to have to hopefully get the NASA one to as quick of a stop as possible so we can get ready to do its next launch. While that is happening, the Soviets are not far behind. They are coming in a little bit short, but they have the advantage of jet engines, which can basically get them as far as they want. But as I say that, the NASA shuttle is back on the launch pad and back in the air for the second module, which is going to be the fuel tank. Yes, this uh, station does double as a refueling depot that I could use in the future, and I'll have two of them, so that will be great. So these guys just coming into land now. Soviets looking like they might have a little more graceful of a landing than the Americans, but they are still a little bit high off the ground. There they go, just bringing her in for a touchdown. And now we can go back to the split screen where we can see the Americans getting close to orbit and the Soviets definitely not above kind of falling off the end of the runway. That, that didn't happen. 
Uh, now the Soviets are back on the launch pad with their energy rocket fully stacked together and back ready for their payload number two. And while I do that, the NASA has staged away their side boosters and they are getting ready to circularize themselves around Kerbin for their second payload. Looks like the NASA shuttle is now developing a slightly more comfortable lead over the Soviets. Let's see if that can stand. A major reason for that is because the NASA shuttle has a much better TWR off the pad which means that the Soviets are always basically having to play catch up whenever they have the Energia booster attached. However, because of the Buran powered flight, it is much easier to return back to the runway. So they, this Buran is less prone to crashing, which the space shuttle is not, which uh, is a teaser foreshadowing, right guys? Now back into space once again, and now it's going to be time to do our very first rendezvous. The another advantage that the Buran has, it is much better at rendezvousing uh, because of the way that the engines are set up. Now normally in real life you would ditch that orange tank uh, and the booster for both the Buran and the American shuttle. But I had very little fuel in my orbital maneuvering thrusters and I wanted to save them for landing for both craft, so I decided to do that. So a little bit unrealistic, but hopefully you guys can bear with me while we are doing this. I would like to, guys, thank you very much for the amount of support. Um, these last two days have been the craziest two days on my channel. I cracked 2,000 views in one day for the very first time. That was, thank you guys, I hit, <laughs> you guys. And I hit 500 subs too this morning. That was insane. If you don't know, I have a goal to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and we are now halfway to the goal. It is, inc you guys, you guys are awesome. Um, I'll see you guys on Discord. You are awesome. You guys are fun to fun to talk to every once in a while. Or, yeah, and uh, we are going to be starting our very first Discord challenge tomorrow. So if you haven't uh, joined the Discord, and if you want to, feel free. We're doing we're going to be kind of doing some Reddit-ish challenges, kind of like how the old Reddit challenges used to work, and going to be doing some challenges. So I will announce that in tomorrow's video what the challenge will actually be, and you'll have one week to work on it if you're interested. And then I'll announce the winner in the following week's video. So if you're interested in that, uh, join the Discord. Um, yeah, that's great. Or if you just want to talk. So um, plug the site. Uh, we are now approaching the station, or uh, one of our space shuttles, as the other still has to finish up its rendezvous, but it looks like it's gained a little bit of ground back on the NASA shuttle, the Soviet one did, uh, just because it was able to do its rendezvous just a little bit easier, but if I can get that time warp done pretty quick, then they should be able to get docked together nicely. Now what is getting docked together nicely is the... Uh, NASA station. Now, if you're wondering why I have that uh, heat shield on the back of the fuel tank, uh, that is just there as a simulated radiation shield uh, because sometimes you can get big radiation storms or solar storms or all that kind of nonsense bad stuff, or solar wind rather. And you know, you might you want some shielding so you don't get like all the cancer. So that's what that's for. It's not really a thing that works in KSP, obviously, but you, you got you got to imagine, mate. Uh, now that we don't have to imagine is that the fact that the Soviets are deploying their second payload, but while that happens, the NASA shuttle has already deorbited itself, so it looks like it is taking a little bit more of a lead. It got its docking done real quick, so the Soviets are going to have to do a very quick dock if they intend on catching up to the NASA shuttle, which is already descending through around 30 kilometers now and arriving at the runway. One major drawback of the NASA shuttle uh, it is much less stable on re-entry, so basically every time I landed it, it always ended up spinning out at like 20 to 10 kilometers. So basically what, I, what my plan was for re-entry uh, was to uh, just basically stall it out over the runway, but that is not important anymore because, uh-oh, oh, that's not good. It looks like we destroyed it. We're going to have to load a quick save now. That, that might have lost us some time, so the Soviets do need to take advantage of this opportunity. Now we're going to have to dive towards the runway and try that landing and see if we can not crash. We're coming up to the end where we're not a lot of runway left and I pull up a little bit too late and we crash again. So that's going to be another quick save. It could get a little bit tight here if I don't. Or if the NASA shuttle does not, I'm both of these people obviously, but the NASA shuttle does not get that landing stuck on this third attempt. They could be in trouble as the Soviets are over the peninsula through 20 kilometers and the NASA shuttle has done a little bit of a bounce but they are down now on the ground and they have successfully deployed their second payload and now they are going to get back to the launch pad as quickly as possible and deploy their third payload as the Soviet shuttle kind of spins out now 
it is not, like I said, the NASA shuttle is not stable, but the Soviet shuttle is also not stable. It's more stable than the NASA one, but not by that much. Uh, NASA shuttle back in the air. These guys are actually both fairly stable when they get below seven, five kilometers, but on their way down, they are very spinny. Another thing it's hard to control is this, the whole booster stack thing while it is climbing. Like, you know, if you watch the engines or the vectors on my NASA shuttle, they are just gimbling all over the place during this ascent, especially as I deploy the boosters, which is coming up very second. But as they deploy, it looks like they have shredded off one of our wings, so we're gonna have to revert the flight, which is gonna give the Soviets even more time as they come over the runway now, and they do a nice, beautiful landing, probably the best landing in the entire video. So good job on them, or good job on me. I'm actually pretty happy with that landing. But the Americans are back in the air as they will continue to get their way back into orbit. And they will start their gravity turn, which is actually able to do it much sooner than the Soviets. The Soviets have to go straight till five kilometers to start the gravity turn because their the energy is not stable at all. Um, below five kilometers, but it'll just start flipping over. It's crazy, so I have to wait till five kilometers to set my gravity turn. It's a little bit of a disadvantage, but hey, you know, I'm a very bad builder, obviously. Uh, so, you know, not easy. Uh, coming up to, it's not easy to fly, it was actually really annoying to fly. I, if, you're, if you're thinking about making a space shuttle, I mean, you think again, maybe. <laughs> I mean, they're fun to make once or twice, but like, like I had to do six launches with these, and I did a previous video with the Buran where I had to do seven, so that's a combined 13 launches in like two months with space shuttles. Don't recommend doing that. Maybe one or two per year is a good dose of space shuttle flying, but they're fun to make, though. They're, they're good fun to make, especially the Buran, because it's a little bit more unique. It has those four side boosts instead of the SRB, so you have to kind of do more, a little more work, but it's fun. So if you're ever looking for a fun project, be ran slash energy, a fun thing to recreate. But that, I'm getting on a tangent here, or I'm just starting to ramble off topic. The race is coming to its final few minutes as they are going to be docking their station. Once they get their stations fully completed, it's going to be a matter of whoever can back, get back to the runway first will be the victor. Now the uh, NASA shuttle is going to be doing its rendezvous right now, or its first burn of the rendezvous, because of the way the center of thrust is, it never can really maintain that maneuver node very well, so it is going to take, I believe, two correction burns with the NASA shuttle to get the rendezvous fully set up, and I believe the same is also true for the Soviets, but it looked like it only took one, uh, or I, yeah, it only took one that time, but my separation is about five kilometers, so that's, you know, it's a trade-off. A big separation and this uh, payload does have to get reconfigured the solar panels as you will see in a moment which is what this payload is when I get the NASA shuttle deployed but it looks like the Soviet shuttle actually will be the one you get to see with because they have pulled ahead because of the bad rendezvous that the NASA shuttle has they are now in the lead for the first time in the whole video so they're gonna undock the first payload they're gonna have to rotate it around to the docking port that it is supposed to go to and then they will dock that up and then they will do so for the second payload as or the second uh, array as well but it looks like the NASA has a uh, NASA shuttle has opened up its cargo bay and is deploying the payload and as that happens the Soviet payload comes together or the first part of it and now the second part will as well as they will just quickly come together and that is also going to be happening for the NASA shuttle for the first section now the second section is going to be coming together as the Soviets align their second section for docking in a quick moment but it looks like the NASA has already completed their docking now they're headed straight for the space station as it looks like they have taken the lead as the Soviet struggle a little bit with their docking and now we are going to be really getting close to the end here guys it's just going to be a matter of landing their craft in the next few seconds as the space stations are completed and it looks like the NASA shuck station rather is coming together right about now. It's all docking for it's been a little bit fiddly, but there they go. And there is a fully completed space station right there. That is the first station. And now it's going to be the Soviets' turn to hopefully finish up the docking very quickly as the NASA shuttle gets ready to deorbit itself and it looks like they might take the lead and they could have the potential to win the challenge or the race right here. Spoiler alert, that doesn't happen. Spoiler, yeah, that's kind of rude. No, I'm not saying it's not salute. I'm not saying it one way, but it's attempt. I'm, I'm for zero retention, right guys? 
something something happens. Um, so the Soviet one, as the NASA one starts its initial re-entry, is coming in nice and slowly to finish up their space station. The NASA shuttle is already over that ridge and getting close to the Global Space Center. And there is the Soviet station fully completed. So that's two of two space stations fully completed and in low curve and orbit as we speak. And now the Buran is going to have to deorbit itself, and the NASA shuttle is starting to spin out, and that's going to look like it's going to be a really tricky glide. I'm not sure if this NASA can make it back to the space station, I need, or the space center. I'm going to use all of my fuel. If they can make it back, they are going to be the victors. But it looks like they are coming down through about 100 meters a second, and it doesn't look like the NASA shuttle is going to be able to make it. I pull up one last attempt to try and make it, but then the nose falls, and it is clear we are not going to make it, so I'm going to have to redo that. And that is spelling trouble for the NASA shuttle as the Soviets have now taken the lead because of their big blunder. That was cringy, but the Soviets now are coming in. Looks like I'm trying to do some aerodynamic braking to slow down and a little bit too much. Now it's starting to spin out. As I do that, the NASA shuttle has re-entered the atmosphere. Well, the Soviet shuttle fires up its jet engines and now has to make its way back to the runway. NASA shuttle can take the lead and win the challenge here if it can get to the running before the Soviets. Now the NASA shuttle is starting to dive straight for the runway once it gets control. And now it will be coming in. Whoever can get the wheels on the ground first wins the challenge. This could be a really close one. Soviets are playing their land here as the NASA shuttle comes over the runway. Who is going to make it? And there it is. The NASA shuttle has won the challenge as the Soviets there come down finally just a few seconds later that was a very that was a close one guys but it looks like the nasa shuttle has taken the cake and won the race so good job to them i'm going to throw up some cards now uh for uh videos and i have my make sure it's great again series if you are interested in that which will go up and that's going to be it for me today so i'd like to thank you for watching we'll see you next time please write a comment on this video once again thank you for watching we'll see you next time and bye